I'm the Unite Builder, and today's episode I'm turning this whole mess into a little pigtail. Why? Well, besides my drawer functioning better with a short little pigtail, all this nonsense gets to be a hassle to deal with after a while. It's easier just to have a little pigtail and a long extension cord so you can just plug in wherever the heck you need it and not have to deal with all this every time that you use it. So, first things first, get your tools out. You're going to need a soldering iron, some flux, uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of flux as long as you have it, and uh, a little bit of solder. I like the flux core solder, it's just stuff I have laying around. Uh, the reason you're doing this is because you're going to be tinning the tips of the wire. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and then you're going to start taking apart the drill. Luckily, most drills are mass produced and they all have the same size screws, so you're really not going to have to worry about what screw went where. If you do, you know, just keep track of it. It's not that hard. There's only like 12. Start unscrewing all these nice little summer screws. So eventually you're going to run into a screw that you can't take out. The best advice I can give is to unscrew it as much as you can until it's bouncing around in the hole. And then you take an X-Acto knife or some other very thin flexible blade. The flexible part is kind of the ideal. You don't want it so rigid, especially like uh, some of these X-Acto blades where they'll snap in half if you use a little too much pressure. Um, the ideal is just to, I don't want to stab myself, safety. So, you want to get it so that the screw is right underneath the blade and you just pop it out. Don't put too much pressure on it. In fact, if you want to put your finger just above it so that when you pop it out, you can grab it. If you don't have your finger on it and you go like that, it's going to go flying and your day is going to suck because you have to find this little screw that's on the floor somewhere. And if it's anything like my garage, it'll be gray screw, gray garage floor you'll be on the floor for a while. Don't do that. Now it's time for the reveal. Sometimes you can just get your fingernail right under the frame. You want to try to bring it all up at the same time. This way you don't crack the case. And there you go. A few quick things here. You'll notice there's a couple little spots that have some lubricant in there. That's a good thing. Uh, you'll see some bits of dust, some dirt that's in here. It doesn't really matter unless it's really caked on and hard. If that's the case, you can just go with a scribe or a very thin edge screwdriver and just kind of scrape it off. But it doesn't really matter. As long as it's, you know, a little thin dust, it's fine. This is what we're going to be dealing with. You have your strain relief right here. This is the external boot strain relief. It's sometimes necessary, but it's alright. And right here is the switch. Now you notice you got your black and your white wire. Most drills don't have a grounding. Now for the fun part, this is the tinned wire. So you just pull. Try to get all that out. So what's going on in there is there is a captive uh, board. So it's holding it like this. The wire goes up. And the captive board holds it in place and allowing the circuit to complete. Why do they do this? Well, in case the wire ever gets cut or something else happens to the wire, you can just easily replace it. And you have these tinned uh, ends, you just slide in, and there's no fraying happening. So, this is where paying attention really helps. So, the length of the wire here is what was needed to complete the circuit originally. So, what we're going to do is take a measurement from here. To the tinned wire and we're going to make sure that we have that much room from the end of the plug from here to distances unknown because I haven't measured it yet. So let's get a tape measure out. Okay now we have the tape measure. Go up there and we lay it out and it's just about seven inches. That's good enough for me. We're going to measure 
And we're going to lose the diagonal cutters that we had laying around. That's always fun. These will have to do. So right there. Look at this fun little batch we get to have left over. Yay, recycling! Next, we're going to line up the bared wire to try to get a better idea of how much wire we need to bear. Uh, right about there. You don't want to go too deep. And you want to use a nice sharp blade. The reason you don't want to go too deep here is that you could cut your good wire. Not a good idea. So you get just enough where you have an opening like that. And you can see where you need to cut. Twink. And huzzah! All this is just some insulation. You can snip that off or cut it off or whatever. I am going to cut it off because it's annoying. Okay, now we've bared our wires. Make sure you always cap your blades when you're done. Lots of stabbed fingertips. This is something you'll learn. So, I'm going to try to get the same amount. That's way too short. Close enough. And you twist, twist, twist. Come on, baby, do the twist. Next, you get yourself some flux. I picked this up at Home Depot. Dirt cheap. So, there's different schools of thought on how you can do this. You can use an acid brush. I really don't care. I'm just going to dip it through like that. Why? Because, one, it's cheap, so I'm not really caring. Uh, two, you just want to get it covered so that the flux can pull all the solder through the wire that you're dealing with. Okay, so when I did this before, it went a lot easier. And because it's on film, it wants to make me look like a dope. So, whatever. And then when you're done, make sure to put the cap on. Alright, so we've got these all fluxed. And now we go on to soldering. So, this is a soldering station I picked up for dirt cheap. Uh, there's usually a sponge here. It's a good idea to have it if you're going to be doing a lot of soldering, but for tinning it doesn't matter. As you can see, I picked it up at the now defunct Radio Shack. I mean, I'm sure there's still some around. I've heard, anyway. I have no idea where, though. So anyway, we've got this going for us. Uh, you just turn it on. I like to put it on the high setting. Because, you know, why not? You need it hot. And we just sit and wait. That's nice and hot. I have the wire in my helping hands. Now, when it comes to thin wire and alligator clips, I try to put it past the teeth itself because if you don't, you're going to end up with some marks and possibly perforations in the shielding. That's never a good thing. Now, when it comes to lead, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but there is some smoke coming off of here. Yeah, it's a little more visible. This stuff, yeah, it's toxic. So, what are we going to do? We're going to stow that for a moment. And turn on a fan. 
doesn't have to be anything too powerful, just enough to get that toxic gas away from you. So, we're going to spin. Just like that. And now the other one here. Come on, helping hands. Help out. And ta da. Tinned. One important detail is when you're done, wipe off the connection here because any of that flux you leave could end up being corrosive. I'd say about 99.9% .9 of all the fluxes are corrosive if left on. So you want to just clean it off the best that you can. I just happen to have an old sock. It's good enough. There we go. See, no perforations. A little bit of that flux. And there we go. Nice and tinned. Alright, so now we are back. And the black wire goes on the inside. Gently do this. Don't want to mess it up. Now sometimes these captive things are a little hard. And that is where you can get a, I don't know, spudger, whatever you want to call it. Remember, if this was meant to be easy, it would have been. But it's not, so it's not. Let's try the other one. And yes, unlike the lawnmower, I went and checked out what I was doing for positions before I put them in. There we go. Let's see if we can do the same here. I'm sure they have some little method of doing this in the factory. Good for them. So, captively held. Yay! Put this back. Put this here like that. And bippity boppity booyah. There we go. Wasn't that simple. So now it's just a matter of reassembly. Oh my god, that was so hard. Yeah, now I gotta toss in the screws. Point still valid. Now that that's done, we do what we used to call back in maintenance shop the magic smoke test. You plug it in, and if you get the magic smoke, you done messed up. So, it's on. No smoke! I had confidence the whole time, I swear! <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Look how much more space I've got in here now. Hey, it's awesome! Yay! No cords! Yay! Just a word of caution. I know what I'm doing. You may not, being a novice, or a professional, I don't know, just, uh, when it comes to doing this kind of modification, just be aware that it could void the warranty, depending how your warranty is written. Um, good idea to check your warranty before you go modifying the tool. If it's an older tool that you just don't care about and it's well past warranty, which most of my stuff is, it doesn't matter. 
just make sure that you take lots of pictures when you're taking it apart and you follow the steps as far as tinning and reconnection in the right order and all that. So, if you like my videos, please subscribe. And until next odd night, I'm the odd night builder.